Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma. Now, first off, I want to tell you a bit about the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Now, if you've never heard of Skillshare, I'm here to tell you all about them. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes, creative and inspiring classes for all you creative people out there. Now, I don't know about you, but I really wanted 2022 to be the year that I fed that creative part of myself. That that part that I feel has got a little bit lost over time, you know, with work and babies and stuff. Um, and I felt like I really needed a safe space and a like-minded community in which to do that. And I found that in Skillshare. So Skillshare has literally thousands of different classes across a really wide range of creative genres, from photography to drawing to content creation and even things like marketing and web development. Now, I really love drawing and painting, um, but I felt like I'd never really found my style within that. So I'm doing a class called Find Your Style. <laughs> Five ways to unlock your creative identity with Andy J Pizza. It is a really fun, unintimidating class. I'm about halfway through and I'm loving it. So if you have a skill you're trying to learn or you want to tap into that creative part of yourself, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. And I'm so excited to be able to help you on that journey because the first 1,000 of you who sign up using the link in the description box below will get a whole month's free trial of Skillshare. How amazing is that? So you can start your creative journey ASAP. So thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, which is an absolute summary stunner. I can't actually believe we've never done one of these. It's a roulard, people, I know pretty 70s, but this is going to be a roulade with a difference. It's going to be an exotic, tropical, mango-filled roulade with a zingy yuzu curd filling. Oh, and toasty pistachios on the outside. Mm, I can't wait. So the first thing we need to do is make the yuzu curd so that it has time to chill down. So I've got a heat-proof bowl here. I'm going to put in 65 grams of caster sugar and then 65 grams or milliliters if you like of yuzu juice now yuzu if you do not know is a japanese citrus fruit it's a bit of a hybrid mm, gosh it smells so nice it's a bit of a hybrid it sort of tastes a bit like grapefruit mandarin lemon all at the same time i've never seen one in real life because you just can't get them here but i believe they're pretty ugly but inside it's a delicious smelling fragrant citrus fruit and i have 65 grams of it i'm gonna put it in my sugar Ooh -hoo. So that is the start of it. And now I'm going to add three egg yolks and one whole egg and just whisk it lightly. And once you've broken up the egg yolks and it's all kind of smooth, you want to take that over to a bain marie. I have one here, I made earlier. And it's on a medium heat. Whack it on and just what you want to do is stir it gently for about eight to 10 minutes until it thickens up really nicely. Righty ho, oof, that's hot and wet on the bottom. Let's just pop that there, actually. And now I'm going to cool it down and finish it off by putting 50 grams of chopped cold butter in and stirring it with my whisk just until it's all melted and really well incorporated. So it's looking lovely and goopy and thick. It smells incredible, but it sometimes does have a little bit of like eggy lumpy bits. So. I always put my curd through a sieve just to get rid of any of those horrible bits. And you want to cling film this or put it into an airtight container and allow it to cool before putting it in the fridge to chill down completely. Right, it's meringue time because a roulade is literally something completely different without a meringue. I don't know what, probably just a bowl of yogurt and cream and fruit, which is pretty nice too, but I love meringues, so let's get started. So meringues are obviously very simple, but there's a few things that you need to know. First thing is you've got to use clean bowls and whisks. This has been wiped around with vinegar. If you don't have vinegar, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, actually sometimes I don't. And I have to use a lemon, which is the other thing to do. <laughs> so you just want to get rid of any grease or dirt, because that will stop your egg whites from whisking up and that would be a travesty. The second rule is that you usually weigh your eggs and the sugar is double the weight of those eggs. So I'm using a 12 by 10 inch tray here, which I've greased and lined with grease proof paper. And for that size of tray, I'm using four egg whites. If you have a slightly bigger tray, I'd use five. If it's smaller, I'd use three. 
but I'm using this one. So I've got four, which weighed 130 grams, so obviously 260 grams of caster sugar. So get your egg whites into the bowl, and with meringues, you want to always start off slowly, and then once it's been going around for a little bit, turn it up to a medium speed, and when it hits a frothy bubble bath consistency, add a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And then you can speed that up to a medium high speed to really whip those egg whites. Once your egg whites have become really white and you've got nice tight bubbles, you can start adding the sugar. So I like to do this a little spoonful at a time because that way it incorporates nice and gently and you don't knock out any of the air. When all your sugar is in, you can turn it up even further because the quicker this whips, the quicker the caster sugar will dissolve and you do want it to dissolve because you don't want grainy meringues. So this sometimes takes anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes, depending on how much meringue you're making. So I'm just gonna leave this little guy doing his thing and get on with chopping some pistachios, which I have over here. Now, I love the color of these pistachios and I would love it if they remained as green and poppy um, as this on the roulade. But alas, once they've been in the oven, they do tend to go a kind of brown toasty co colour, but they do smell and taste delicious, so it's a small price to pay. When it's starting to look like it's on its way to glossy, smooth glory, you can then add a bit of uh, flavour. So I'm going to put, put a pinch of salt in and a teaspoon of lovely vanilla extract and just let that go for another couple of minutes just to finish it off. I think that's ready. Oh yeah, look at that. Now, it is glossy, it is stiff. It's, that is a stiff peak if ever I saw one. It's grain free and it's all mine. <laughs> so now you've got to get it off the whisk, which sometimes can be quite difficult. Uh, but then, once it's off, you can put it into your baking tray. So it's easy to just dump it in the middle and then spread it out with a palette knife. can be sometimes quite difficult to get an even layer because it's so sort of floofy, but I reckon I'm there. So once you've evened it out as much as possible, you need to get those delicious pistachios in there. So sprinkle them liberally over the top. Don't waste a crumb. Now this needs to be baked, first of all, at 170 degrees C in a fan-assisted oven. I mean, it doesn't have to be fan assisted, but add 20 if you don't have one of those. Um, and that just needs to be baked for eight minutes to start with. When it's had eight minutes, I'm going to drop the temperature down to 135 and bake it for a further 15. little thing. Now don't worry if your meringue has puffed up like this because it'll all get flattened down in a minute. So what the next thing to do is, while it's still hot, keep your oven gloves handy, put a large piece of greaseproof paper over it like so and then a tray or a cooling rack like I'm using over the top. Use your oven gloves, don't burn your fingers, and then flip it upside. Well, I'm really, obviously really good at this. Elegant, so elegant. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's totally fine. Get rid of this, you don't need that. And then, obviously, this tin is gonna be hot, hot, hot. So use your oven gloves to get it off. Woo. And then peel away the paper carefully. to reveal the fluffy meringue inside. So get rid of that, you don't need that anymore. So that just needs to cool down for at least 10 minutes, but not more than half an hour because it might start crisping up, but it should be soft and mallowy with a crispy outer shell, I guess. So, a couple of things to do in the meantime. First thing is to cut a mango up. Now, 
I have always been, well, I used to be really intimidated by cutting mangoes. And I used to do that like 80s thing where you sliced a bit off and then you made like a hedgehog. But I now prefer to peel the whole mango with a sharp paring knife. So if you like to do this method, please be careful. Now it gets a bit slippery at this point, so please make sure you've got a good grip on it because you don't want it to slip out your hand and it'll slice your thumb off or something. So now I've got a naked mango and I'm going to just cut the cheeks off, if you will. So obviously you've got that really annoying, but probably very necessary <laughs> stone in the middle of it. Find that and slice through. Oh, look at that. Lovely big cheek. Um, and do that again on the other side and then just kind of slice off all the random bits around the edges. Once you have all the kind of flesh off your mango, you want to chop those little bits into small chunks, maybe like a centimetre squared or cubed, I guess. Now, I'm going to set that to one side because we don't need it just yet. Now, it's cream whipping time, one of my favourite things in the whole world to do. So I've got 200 grams of double cream. You could use whipping cream if you wanted. And I'm going to whip that with my trusty balloon whisk until it reaches a soft peak consistency. That is a lovely floppy consistency. Now at floppy stage, I'm going to add 100 grams of Greek yogurt, just a lovely thick creamy yogurt. That's just going to cut through the creaminess a little bit and I think it will really complement all the mango and the yuzu. I know this actually because I've made this a couple of times already. Uh, so just whisk that through and once it's all well incorporated, oh yum, you want to spread that all over your roulade. So I'm just going to turn it this way actually because this, this is the way I'll roll it. So put it all on the top and spread it out with a palette knife. And when you've spread it out as evenly as possible, you can then top that with some blobs of this lovely yuzu curd. Now you might not want to use all of it because it does make quite a bit, but save this yuzu curd leftovers and you can use it in some other bakes. Uh, it's really up to you how much you want to put in. Just remember that when you roll it in, up, some of it might smush out the bottom, so maybe don't fill it too much. And now, Finally, we get to use our lovely little bits of ripe chopped mango, just sprinkle them over the top. That'll do, now it's rolling time. Now this can fill you with fear, or you can just kind of roll with it. <laughs> See what I did there? So, the good news is, the reason for having this grease, grease proof paper underneath it is that it will help us roll. So, I'm gonna start at this end. So, you wanna do it the long way, like roll it lengthways rather than stubby end, otherwise you'll end up with a really fat, short one. Or well, maybe you'll like that, I don't know. So, gently curl it up. I might actually start off with my hands without the grease proof and get it, get it curling. And obviously, it's meringue, so don't go crazy if it starts to crack, that's the point. But once you've kind of got it on a roll, <laughs> just keep coming. You wanna use the grease proof to guide it over, and you'll see some of this filling kind of smushes out. I don't worry about that. The whole point of this dessert is that it's a little bit messy. Obviously make sure the messy bit is the bottom, which it now is, and then use that grease proof to wrap it up. So just gently tuck it under. And I'm actually going to put that back onto the baking tray that I baked it on, because it's the right size obviously, and pop that into the fridge for at least an hour. And actually, these are really good if, like, they're really good frozen. I mean, they're not good frozen, but you, they hold up if you freeze them. So if you want to make this way in advance for a dinner party or something, just whack it in the freezer, bring it out, have it at room temperature, but I'm just gonna eat this today. So I'm just gonna chill this for about an hour. Oh my gosh. Sally's here with me because it's so big and as much as I'd love to give it a go, mm. I don't think I could eat all this by myself. I think you probably could, but I'd be really upset. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> what do you reckon? I think it looks great and it sounded amazing. Like I was in the little kitchen doing some stuff and every time you were saying something I was like, oh, oh, it sounds so good. 
And here you are, here to help. And do you know what's so great about it? I reckon end to end, that would take 45 minutes to an hour, if that. Nice. So if you were like invited to a dinner party last minute and you had to bring pudding and you were like, I don't know, what on earth have I got time for? I mean, maybe you wouldn't use yuzu because uh, you know, the yuzu juice may be a little bit hard to find. We can get it in our supermarkets here because we're lucky. <laughs> and you can buy it on various websites. This, um, is, this is literally the dessert yeah. that my mum would make. My mum, mm. she wasn't blessed in the uh, dessert category, you good, know. Good but this was like, if it was a special event, mum's making a real art. I know, that's what I mean. Like, it's so simple. Even my mum can do it. Even <laughs> Sally's mum. Even Mama Della. <laughs> <laughs> but you could do it with strawberries, you could do it with all sorts. Banana? Oh, can we no, just eat it? Let yes, me eat it. Let me eat Stop it. talking about <laughs> it. Okay, how much do you want? This much, please. That's fairly decent. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Squishy, McSquishes them. Let's pop it on a little plate for you. Oh, Whoa! Oh, look, a bit landed on your fork. You've got hardly any work to do now. I want the same, I think. Oh, squishy. It looks lovely. Right, oh, gosh, all that filling oozing out. It can't wait to be eaten. Okay. It does look delicious, though. Look at that. We've got the lovely roundy roundy in the inside, and we've got that lovely cream. The meringue is almost spongy. It's like, like a pavlova it's, it's type. Like, like mallowy. Yeah, like pavlova. Yeah. Like the inside of a pavlova. Yeah, go for it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mmm. Mmm. It's so light. Mmm. And as I suspected, all sorts of textures. Mmm. Yummy, yummy. You've got the kind of crispy meringue. The soft meringue, which also has a little bit of chew to it, mm. in the, exactly the way you want it to be. The delicious curd, you get a little bit of kind of squishiness from the mango and the crispy nuts. Mm. Triumphant. Something for everybody in that. Are we joyfully triumphant with this? I am. Um, yeah, it sounds a bit Christmassy, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, you can have this at Christmas and summertime, totally springtime, can. whenever you like. Mm. So please do make it, let us know that you've made it by hashtag and Cupcake Gemma. I'm putting your photos on Instagram so we can see how you got on. Massive thanks to you for joining us and also a huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I really hope you check them out and don't forget about that link in the description box below that will get you, if you're one of the first 1,000 people to, a one month free, free trial of Skillshare. You'll Amazing. Have to race me to it because I want to do it. You should do it. Yeah, it sounds really cool. You love doing things. I do love to do <laughs> things, you're right. <laughs> you're crafty. <laughs> no, it does. It sounds, it sounds wicked. It I, is I, wicked. A hundred percent. So we will continue to eat this. I'll continue my learning journey. I'm going to embark on one. Yes. And we'll see you next time for another recipe. And don't forget, you can already pre order the Crumbs and Doilies book which is coming out in November, so do that. It will mean the world to us. And See. to you, because it's going to be blooming yeah. great. You're going to love it. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.